If you've followed this channel for a number of years, you may remember that back in July 2017, I actually uploaded a video right here on this channel, which followed me through a very much an experimental week. It was a week where I was working full time and I took a week off work because I wanted to see if it would be possible to earn a living from being a full time match angler. Now, as it turns out, I have literally just had that very same week, but for real. It was a week where I somehow managed to clock up over a thousand miles. I was competing in two major big money competitions. I also managed to get out to a beautiful venue near Doncaster with the Matrix Media team. And I also got the opportunity to spend two days on the bank coaching on two fantastic venues. Well, on the Saturday and Sunday, it was all about feeder masters. I was kindly offered a feeder masters ticket to go and fish the qualifier down at Nichols Pit down in Kent. Now that was a 500 mile round trip from my home in Sheffield. So as I didn't have anything on on the Saturday, I decided to break it up. I decided to take dad along with me, drive down to Kent on the Saturday, have a quick look at the venue. Then we stayed overnight in Kent, just a few miles from the venue. And then that's where on Sunday I went along to the headquarters and Brian Nesbitt was there running the match and it was just a great opportunity to see the venue but also I was hoping for a good peg because I really wanted to qualify for that £12,000 final which takes place at the end of September. Now that match was one that I actually put together as a live match film so I will put links to that video above and below for you but it was an incredible match, it was a really interesting match, it was one where if for those of you that have seen the video already, it was rumoured that it was going to be all about carp. But as we know, um, certainly in July, um, a lot of the carp at that time of year just kind of spend a lot of the time in the upper layers, which means it doesn't really lend itself and it's not suited to feeder fishing. But it was a, a really interesting match. It was one where I basically spent the first half of the match looking for carp. We were told we'd need carp. But then as it panned out, the carp obviously didn't decide you know they wanted to feed so it very much turned into a, a skimmer match then it was just a case of getting your head down and catching whatever you can i was very surprised but over the moon to qualify for that final in september which i'm really looking forward to thank you so much to everybody who's sent so many kind messages about that uh, it certainly made the uh, five and a half hour drive home a little bit better and obviously it was great you know to have a weekend away with dad as well and to see a new venue so that is another big money final that we've got to look forward to at the end of september well we didn't get home on sunday night until gone half past 10 so obviously as you'd expect we was quite tired so monday morning was left a little bit free i had to get my kit ready because tuesday and wednesday i was going to be out on the bank so the first part of monday i went up to a local reservoir which was damn flask reservoir I haven't been up there since there was snow on the ground. I filmed a video up there, which I'm sure some of you have seen. And I'll put a link at the end of this video and underneath for you to that one. And it's one where I really went, it was a bit of a quest looking for fish through those really cold temperatures back in, I think it was February when that was actually filmed. It was the first time I'd been up there. And I just went up there with a couple of rods, uh, new rods that I've got that I've been trying out, new matrix rods. And it was just kind of just to get a feel for them and just to kind of see if they were going to be suited to fit into my armory which i will be telling you about over the coming weeks but it was great to see the venue like that and then the afternoon really was just about getting my kit ready for the two following days and that's because on the tuesday i was due to be out with matrix filming with adam firth so i had a set of river gear to get ready for that and because i knew i probably wouldn't be home while later on tuesday evening i then had to pre-plan and get my kit ready for wednesday which was a match on a still water bream venue so i had two lots of kits to get ready but as always i knew or i expected i was going to be getting home late and tired i didn't really want to be getting my kit ready on those evenings so i used the whole of monday to get my kit ready for those two days Tuesday I was out with Adam Firth from Matrix. As you'd expect every now and then I'm required to get out with Matrix to do some filming and this one took us along to the absolutely beautiful stretch of river. It's the River Don at Sprotborough. Some of you may recognise this stretch of river. I have done a couple of videos in that area um, and again I'll put links underneath to one of the videos which is it was bream fishing on that venue so some of you may recognize it but it's a stunning bit of river and we were there just to do a, a video for matrix which was focusing on kind of catching anything on the feeder on a summer river as we all know you know rivers in in summer tend to be uh, low 
they tend to be clear and they don't tend to be flowing quite as much as what they tend to be uh, you know later on in the year so it's very much a different sort of an approach but we did a live stream Adam went logged on live on the fish matrix Facebook page and that was good a uh, little bit of banter we answered a few questions as well for people logging on so thank you if you logged on to those but it was a really interesting day it was a day where um, we had to constantly keep making tweaks you know we talk about scaling down scaling down on, on the size of feeder the, the amount that you're feeding on summer rivers day some bleak can be a problem and they were an issue but without spoiling the video for you you know I'm not sure when that's gonna be out it's probably gonna be out in a few weeks time on the fish matrix YouTube channel um, it was a very interesting day where little tweaks made a difference and there were a couple of uh, surprises there as well the peg kept going quiet we didn't quite know why, whether it was a feeding thing or whether we thought it was another issue, but I'll not spoil the video for you, but it was a fantastic day with Adam, you know, stunning stretch of river and it is a day ticket stretch as well. So if that's something you're interested in, then you can go along there and just fish on a day ticket. And then when I got home on the Tuesday night, it was just really about getting my bait and everything ready for the following match, which was in the morning, Wednesday morning. There wasn't too much to do because I'd done most of it on Monday, but it was just a case of getting my bait bag sorted out, changing it over from what I had on the river, changing it over to what I would need for the bream match the following day. Wednesday was all about Feeder King. Now, for those of you that don't know what Feeder King is, it's a competition that's run. It's in about its third or fourth year now. And the actual format is basically, basically the same as Feeder Masters. Each qualifier is a 60 peg match. And the 60 peg match is split up into three zones of 20 anglers and you've got to win your 20 peg zone in order to qualify for the £10,000 final. It's a one day final and all the qualifiers and the final itself, they all take place at Southfield Reservoir. Now the qualifiers take place on Wednesdays and that's why I've never really competed in this competition before because prior to this year I was always been in full-time employment and Wednesday wasn't a very good day for me to have a day off work so I just haven't really been able to commit to the competition however this year has been slightly different but because it was so difficult to get hold of tickets because it's been so popular I only managed to get two or three tickets and this was one of them and I, you know it's the venues fishing hard I mean Southfield Reservoir for those of you that don't know it's the levels are much lower than normal it's only a shallow reservoir anyway it's only about four feet deep anyway however because of some work that's taking place actually on the canal it's the water levels have dropped so the reservoir has literally only been about two two and a half feet deep that's all it's been so it had been fishing hard I haven't been on the venue I've deliberately stayed away from it because I didn't want any kind of preconceived ideas of what to expect I just wanted to go to the um, to the to, to this qualifier with a fresh mind with an open mind not really knowing what to expect I ended up drawing peg 12 which is um, it's one out of the corner and you know as with most bream venues you wouldn't normally want to be in a corner however that corner can produce you know quite often it coincides with when the wind is blowing into it However, that wasn't happening. The wind was going over our left shoulder, so it was pretty much flat calm for the rest of the day. But, but it's we knew it was fishing hard, um, and I've gone there and I've just fished. I've fished three different lines. I fished 50 meters. I fished 30 meters, and then I fished 50 meters. And to cut a long story short, I've I've had a really slow. I've caught a fish straight away. First cast, I've had a fish, but it was about that big, two ounce, and I netted it to make sure I didn't blank because I thought it might have been the only bite I was going to get. And then the first half of the match has just been, you know, I've had two or three small fish. You know, when the tip goes round on a venue like that, it, the fish could be that big or it could be four pound. You know, you're all fishing with maggots, bits of worm and that sort of thing. So, you know, there's obviously an element of luck there when the tip goes round. Um, so I had two or three fish by the halfway stage, but the lad that was two pegs to my right had got three bream. Now, when I say three bream, you might not think that's a lot, but three bream, that will probably have been winning the match at that stage. Two bream might have been winning the match at that stage. So he was, yes, he was probably winning the match, but he was definitely winning the zone, you know, and that's the main thing. We were only there to qualify, that's what it's all about. So at the halfway stage, I've obviously been watching him, I've been seeing what he's doing, seeing how he's been fishing, and that was slightly different from what I was doing, and, and so I've changed. I've changed my line a little bit, my long line. I, I've set it up again with some more feed and then I fish slightly different I've just kind of slowed things down a little bit and it worked immediately you know and um, so I ended up getting three bream but then I've also got you know probably four or five of these hybrids decent hybrids as well and um, rumors were 
that myself and the lad two pegs to my right um, were doing really really well in that part of the reservoir uh, and as it turned out my um, 16 pound that the fish actually weight um, was enough to qualify for the final it just unbelievable feeling you know to to obviously qualify for feeder masters three days earlier and then suddenly qualify for this which is a ten thousand pound final is just fantastic you know it's the first time i've been in that final like i said i've not been able to fish that competition before but you know sometimes you've just got to keep going on qualifiers and hoping you're going to get a chance we know what bream fishing's like bream aren't everywhere bream are a shoalfish simple as that you know and so you there are always going to be areas where there aren't aren't bream uh, and, but then inevitably hopefully there are fi areas where there are fish and if you you look fortunate enough to get on those areas you've obviously got to get your game right but you know it's about getting the chances um, so I was actually over the moon you know it was a, it was obviously only Wednesday going through the week I was still on a high from Sunday from feeder masters but to qualify for that final at Southfield is, is brilliant because it's it's what I would class it's probably one of the most um, home venues if you want to use that term that I've got you know I don't have a home venue I don't you know specialize on any one venue but I've spent a lot of time there and it's a 30 peg final and that is right at the beginning of October so I'm really looking forward to that and obviously with it being in October things will have changed by then in some shape or form so that's something that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you on this channel so I was in a great mood Wednesday night and then that really just when I got home it was um, I I'd, I'd then got Thursday and Friday on the bank I was out coaching However, Thursday was a long drive. Thursday morning, um, I was due to be coaching down at Larford Lakes, which is a, a 250 mile round trip for me. So um, I was tired Wednesday anyway after the match. We had lots of rain and stuff, um, so my kit was wet through. But when I got home, it was just a case of get, you know get my bait bag, get my coaching bag ready um, for the next day, and get to bed early because obviously I was going to have to be up early to get down to Larford Lakes for uh, for quarter past eight. Thursday was all about Larford. Now this day was with John and John really wanted to focus on his method feeder fishing. He's happy with so much, you know, so many other aspects of his fishing, but the method feeder is not something that he's really focused too much on and he wanted to get some confidence with it. And that's obviously why we selected a venue like that. We decided to fish on Specy Lake, just in the in the middle of the Specy Burr Bank. And as you can expect, you know, at this time of year there's always going to be some fish feeding. And he had a really good day. It was a really interesting day. It was one where um I, I was kind of learning about how the lake was going to re respond as well to, to our approach. Like I said before, it is July, you know, and, and that lake is 12 feet deep, so naturally you'd expect carp and, um, and bream as, as well to be up in the water, you know, it's July, and that's why obviously fishing shallow on those venues is so popular at this time of year and so successful. There aren't many fish down there on the bottom. So we often find that we've got to tweak things to get fish down on the bottom in order to catch them, and that's kind of what kind of a day it was you know he just picked a nice comfortable line at about 25 meters we just kept the feeder going in uh, and, and and we had to feed as well you know so it was very much a case of setting the peg up and then going in over the top and catching what we could on it um, it caught he's had two or three carp uh, but then he's had lots of bream as well which you know we know that the method feeder for bream now is a very popular method it's certainly on commercials so it's something that you really need to have in your armory but it you know it was just great to be there and you know phil briscoe was there as well and it was good to see him doing some work on the banks as well you know phil started investing in in the fishery it's been hit two or three times with flooding and that sort of thing so he's investing a bit of time and money into the fishery now they're having the banks um, tipped along and, and graded along the far bank and he's going to be going all the way around there so it was good to see some work you know being done there because you know we all know what um, what it's like as a fishery you know it's a fantastic fishery there's loads of fish in there and it's very very popular as well so that was a really nice day with John but as always um, in midweek it was another long journey uh, well it was 125 miles home however it took me five hours to get home there was uh, two or three accidents on the uh, on the M42 I think it was so yet again, you know, Thursday night, I felt like I'd been living in my van for the week at this stage, but I got home late on Thursday night, and then it was just a case of get, changing all the kit round again, changing the bait over, and that's because on Friday we were due to be on a stunning natural reservoir. Friday morning, I was up bright and early to get in the uh, midweek traffic, and we were heading off to the stunning Staunton Harold Reservoir. I was there with Dan, um, I've seen Dan a few times, he's been on a couple of our group coaching days and he is one of our patrons, he's one of the channel members. 
so it's good when you already know people you know because you've got a lot in common you can chat and you know it's very much a, a friendly kind of a, a coaching session but Dan just kind of wanted to work on everything we went along there because he wanted to work on his on his cage feeder or traditional style feeder fishing but he really wanted to work on a bit of everything you know so we just went through the whole process of what you do when you get to your peg mixing your ground bait cleaning your worms off setting up getting your rods out choosing the right tip the right rod the right reel deciding where to fish you know getting a bomb out there seeing if there's any features out there finding out if there's any differences in depth picking a line clipping up we went through everything and it was a really really good session it was really nice i was amazed how quiet the reservoir was to be honest um, but the water level looked like it was actually at capacity so it was a little bit deeper out there than normal however it meant that we were sat quite a way back as well the water was gin clear so we uh, we went down a dark mixed route we just used um with some match method dark um some of the sauna baits ground bait we went down that route because it was so clear um and it was a really interesting session in the sense that um he set his lines up well he fished one line really he's fished 45 meters he's just focused on that the wind was a little bit tricky so he wanted to work on his um on it on his casting as well he'd got a new rod and a new reel a new setup and the wind was like left left and across left and in um, and so that you know posed a, um, a, a few tests for him but that's why he was there and it, and it, it really just focused on the things that mattered but it really helped that there were so many fish out there as well you know there were fish out there instantly lots of little perch little tiny perch but there were some roach there there were some skimmers there and as the day progressed he obviously he tweaked things like we do you know once he was happy with his casting once he was hitting his clip once he was just happy reading his bites and that sort of thing we started to change things change the way that we fed and that changed the species and the number of bites that he was getting as well so that was really really interesting and obviously as you'd expect to spend um, a session like that in, in, in scenery like that then you know it's just a, a really really wonderful place to spend your day so it had been a very busy week but very much one that you know I trial ran four years ago and obviously to get some results along the way and have two incredible finals big money finals to look forward to later on in the, the year just obviously was the icing on the cake we're in August now I've got another very busy month coming for this channel and myself out there match fishing the Anglin Trust have this year launched the um, feeder national championship it's a team event so I'm going to be competing in that through August that's with our ringer baits team so I'm really looking forward to that I've also got um, five days away filming at Doclo pools for you so I will be there on site fishing the different ponds there doing some filming for you for for this channel so I'm really looking forward to that and then I've also got the River Trent three-day festival I know lots of you are river fans and so I will be doing some filming on that for you that's a three-day event all around the Newark area on the River Trent so that's gonna be something really different for me to share with you because obviously that will be three full days of just river fishing it's been an incredible week and I've got to say a huge thank you to everybody who sent me so many kind messages this week. It's been hugely appreciated. And there are so many events coming now through the back end of this year. I'm really hoping that you're going to enjoy sharing in the experiences with me. So if you don't want to miss out on those, don't forget to hit subscribe. And give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this little insight. So thanks for watching and I really look forward to seeing you in the next upload.